We all know that people can get PTSD, but what about dogs? Well, actually, yes. Yes, they can. But how do we identify it? How do we know it's PTSD? Well, on today's episode, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about what PTSD is in dogs, how to identify it, what not to do, and of course, what to do. So let's go ahead, dive into it next. All right, guys, welcome to this week's episode. I am Jake from OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hey, how's it going? If you're listening to us via any of these awesome podcast platforms, hi, how are you guys doing? Um, Today's, or this week's, I should say, episode is going to be about PTSD. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys, On Dog Training Academy is an online course driven website that is delivering a lot of information to you guys uh, and we're building and creating more information for you guys to help you through dog training and different things we are also starting to put out webinars that are going to be released here soon and we are doing one-on-one virtual lessons so if anybody is in need of help one-on-one help we can certainly do that and if you just want to have us guide you through some stuff, well, if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to look very similar to what you see here. If you need us to show you more things, we can certainly set it up to where you will be able to watch us with our dogs and we can coach you through a lot of different things with that. So make sure that you check out ondogtrainingacademy.com and you know look at all the stuff we have to offer. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're always willing to help. That being said, let's get into this week's topic. Like I said, it's PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, of course, it's something that is very widely known about when it comes to people. You see a lot of stuff like this when it comes like military people coming home from from wars or anything like that and having that kind of different things that trigger different uh, emotional responses. And we we see it as as a human issue, but... Of course, this is something that can stem or go beyond just humans, and that's including dogs. Obviously, cats and anything can have this type of stuff, but because we're a dog page, we're going to definitely do that. Now, real quick before I jump into this, you may hear some noise in the background. Um, We have a a bunch of dogs here right now for training, and unfortunately, one of them, uh, well, not unfortunately, but it's a 14-year-old dog who uh, has some breathing issues, so if you hear any bizarre uh, noises i promise it ain't me it's just her uh just trying to breathe and just be a sweet old dog so just want to let you guys know if you hear anything weird that is definitely what it is i promise it's not me um anyways so post-traumatic stress disorder in dogs um this is something that can happen really with any major traumatic event i'll get into a story here just in a little bit about my own dog and and it can greatly affect dogs and really kind of stick with them long term. It can cause really bad uh, reactions and things. So some stuff you'll see when it comes to dogs with PTSD is you're going to see panic, panic, like a dog who's just really panicky. You're going to see panting, uh, fearlessness, uh, being timid. Now, when I say timid, it doesn't mean necessarily like some people go, yeah, you know, I had a dog that I rescued that was really timid. It must mean that he had a traumatic event. Obviously, these things can also be caused by just under socializing. So keep this stuff in mind. It's just not not like every dog that comes that has issues has like PTSD. Um, it has to happen from something that's that's kind of traumatic to them. Lack of socializing, as as long term traumatic as it seems, it is not something that um, is. It's not PTSD. It's just under socializing and and bad behavior. So anyways, but anyways, other things, um, clinging to the owner. So a dog who gets really nervous or has, has like a really bad emotional response to something could really cling to the owner and want and be jumping on them, pushing on them, different things like that. Depression, hypervigilant vigilance where the dog just sees everything and is noticing every little thing that's happening, almost like they're waiting for that thing that triggers them to happen because it was that traumatic. Um, but there's a lot of different signs that point to it. Now, like I mentioned, a lot of stuff can, can come up of, from a big traumatic event. So you're looking at like thunderstorms, um, 
car accidents. So I actually had a client whose dog, they were in a parking lot of, I don't even know where, but they were in a parking lot and they were just driving. It was like a strip mall or something. They were driving from one store to the other. And what happened was the dog, the, the, the lady put her dog in the car and drove from one store to the other going really slow and it was icy out. Ended up slipping and running into a pole. Wasn't hit hard, didn't do anything, but the dog wasn't buckled or kenneled in the back. And so what ended up happening is the dog fell on the floor. And then ever since then, when the dog goes into the car, the dog starts to pant, gets super stressy and super worried. And it was from that one traumatic event. If you hear that noise in the background, that is that old dog. She just drank water, so I do apologize. I need a studio that's not surrounded by animals. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so... So you could take car accidents, obviously, different things like that. Again, I had another client who's who had to dodge a deer on a road. And same same type of thing happened where the dog got thrown around in the car and suddenly now cars are scary. Um, it, it can be it can be even something like not even intentional or, or, or something like someone shoots a gun and it was so traumatic. It, it, it shocked the dog so much that that dog started to just have an adverse um, um, response to it. So really, it could be a lot of different things. It obviously can be physical too. So like if, let's say the owner smokes, they're, they're, let's say an owner smokes cigarettes, smells like cigarettes, and then beats their dog. This is a, obviously not a great thing, but beats their dog. It could easily be something that where a dog could suddenly have reactions to the smell of someone's of smoke. So now the dog smells smoke on a person and they get fearful and nervous with that person because it triggers that response, that negative response. It's a, it's a stress, right? So my own personal story when it comes to this, um, thankfully wasn't smoking and it wasn't get beating dog or anything like that. But my own personal issue with this was back in 2019, July, yeah, July 19th, 2019. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to be putting up pictures. You'll see some of the some of the pictures from it we got hit with a really bad storm here and it was so bad you know we had it was it was one of those things where you look outside and you can see the storm coming and you're like oh okay yeah it's 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 a storm here it comes and then all of a sudden this the, the clouds go from like that dark black blue to like that really ominous green where you just know something's going to happen and at that point we we're like okay this is going to be probably pretty bad it looks really bad um, and it was, you know, thankfully we had dogs here. We were able to secure the dogs down in a lower level. Um, well, they already were in a lower level and they were all safe and fine. And our own dog, we, we, uh, my wife and, and him went into the bathroom, but the storm was so bad where we had 80 plus mile an hour winds. We had between baseball and softball size hail. And if anybody's ever dealt with that, you can understand the sound it makes when it's hitting your house. But on top of that, it also broke through two front windows, our basement and our upper level window. So it was extremely traumatic and it was loud and scary and there was thunder and wind and lightning and all this stuff, heavy rain, it was crazy. And so what ended up happening after that was anytime there'd be a storm, not only our dog, but our cats would noticeably get nervous with it. And it, it, it even went as far as like when he was out, when like when our dog was outside, there was no issues. You could be outside and and he could be outside in a thunderstorm and be fine with it. But when he comes inside, the noises that the sound of the house makes. So even if it's just windy out now, he still um, has issues with it. And so he it definitely brought on a PTSD for him and for our cats as well. And so that's something you want to keep in mind. Like these things definitely happen. Now, of course, we want to look into, you know, why is or, or, or what what are we supposed to do about this? Right. Because it's 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 frustrating. So you have these situations like now with our own dog, you know, if it's the middle of the night and we get a windstorm that comes through and it's super, super crazy he'll start to pace in his kennel. He doesn't really, I mean, he might whine a little bit, but you can hear him pacing around in his kennel. He's stressed. Now we'll take him out and we'll do some stuff. We'll work with him and help him get through it. But one of the big things I think you have to be is you have to be patient with these guys. You can't get mad at them. And that is, 
one thing that you should not do when it comes to uh, dealing with a dog who has these type of stresses. You cannot, you cannot get mad at them. It's not their fault. Okay, it's just like a person who is who is suffering from PTSD. You, know, you take a soldier or something, and if a gunshot goes off and it makes that person get super anxious and stressed, is punching him in the arm and telling him to chill out or telling him to get over it or yell at him, yelling at him for reacting in a certain way going to do anything? No, of course not. It's going to potentially make something worse. So we have to just be patient and work him through it. So no correcting. We can't correct this. We can't, in my opinion. Now you might talk to some people who say, "Yeah, you can." You can calm responses, but you're talking about tapping into the brain and trying to change the way that the dog perceives something. And I don't think, in my opinion, correcting is going to do it. So I'm not big into correcting a dog for a stress response, like fear barking or anything like that. I don't want the dog to feel like it has to just internalize everything and not not let it be able to express it all. But at the same time, I want to obviously be working on it. So then it's like, what do you do? How do you work on this? Well, positive reinforcement, in my opinion, is extremely important for this. Again, you don't want to throw any sort of negative stuff on top of something the dog perceives as negative already. We want to keep it positive. So using food, using positive reinforcement um, is definitely important. DSCC, so desensitization counter conditioning, this is key to what you should be doing with them. And so that's what we do is we have this, we, we come up with a plan and we say, okay, this is what we're going to do with your dog. We're going to work on some counter conditioning uh, skills and things to start to get the dog to perceive the situation a little bit different. Um, and in extreme cases, you're obviously looking at medication, some sort of, of anti-anxiety medication. And you can do that in conjunction to training as well. You don't have to. And really, I'd say I would keep the medication for the extreme cases. I wouldn't necessarily jump to that first. Um, but that sometimes tied in with training can go a long ways when it comes to PTSD stuff. So keep this in mind when you're when you're running into this at all. Um, don't throw any don't I don't I don't want you to come away from this and go, well, I'm gonna use you know, like, oh my dog has PTSD. Like I mentioned, if you if you have a dog that comes from a shelter and it was under socialized, that's not PTSD. That's still behavior issues. And it's not necessarily meaning that it's the the training and stuff isn't the same. But it's not the same diagnosis, if that makes sense. Um, that's just under socializing. That's just, you know, poor whatever the person who had the dog before. Um, but if there was a traumatic event, you want to make sure you're careful with the dog and you're starting to work them through it. What I will say with Luda, with my dog, when there's thunderstorms and stuff, if he's away, we try to have the radio up a little bit just to kind of drown it out. But if he's out with us, we try to do some fun stuff. We'll work on counter conditioning, but it's all fun. And it starts to get him to be a little bit more okay with it. Now, extreme cases, when that thunderstorm gets really bad, he still has issues. And that's something he may have forever, but we're able to manage it and control it to the point where he's not freaking out. He just gets a little bit stressed. He's not panting. He's not, well, he is panting, but he's not, you know, so scared that we can't leave him in the house or he's going to get destructive or harm himself. He just gets a little bit worked up, and we can definitely see it. But we've worked him back from that, from from when he was first pretty pretty uh, uh, worked up about things to now he's like, all right, this still worries me, but it's less. And it kind of went through using positive reinforcement, using uh, desensitization or counter conditioning. And we didn't do meds with him. We didn't need to, thankfully. We were able to work him through it. Um, but obviously, if this is something that you guys want to talk more about, you can certainly send us a request on On Dog Training Academy, and we can certainly do a one-on-one -on -one thing and kind of walk you through or talk to you about some of the stuff that um, you know we, that could definitely help you. I don't like to say put a cookie cutter plan together for any any one dog. It's always good to hear the situation, understand what the dog is going through, what the people have gone through with the situation, and then develop a plan through that. So. That's why I'm not throwing out saying this is what you got to do ABC. I don't like if you haven't noticed yet on this page, I give a lot of advice, but it's not I can't give you concrete. This is what you have to do. I can give suggestions because it's just not how it works. Like every dog's a little bit different. Every situation's a little bit different. So without talking to you, meeting with you and coming up with a plan, it can become a little bit hard. But anyways, if you guys can hear in the background, dogs are getting a little restless. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce away, get them out, and go play with my dogs. I hope you guys are doing the same. It is March, middle of March now. So hopefully weather's warming up where you are. If it's not always warm, it is not always warm here. Um, get out, enjoy the weather, enjoy your dogs, guys. And like always, we'll see you next week.